On Tuesday, I asked you how to say um, audio book, and for the audio, you okay. said kina, but something else, and I didn't get the other part of it. With two woo two With two Yes, let me show you guys the reading out loud. Okay. Okay. Wu two wu. So in the so here's this one. Thank you, Krenaksa. Oh, here man. we get reading out loud. Oh, wow. Man. So I think an audio book would be ki nach jitu wu chuch. So then we go, uh, I'll show you the parts that are in there. Okay. So we see ki nach natu. We take that first part, and then ki nach. Feels like um, the key part is up, and uh, and then nach is through, like going like that, and then natu is the command form. So you would say jitu. So someone it's being read out loud. Okay. Another way you could probably say yuchayatungi. As well, so like uh, this one would be yuchayatungi means it's something that talks. Yeah. So like when we we were reading a story and translating it, it had a parrot in the story, and uh, George Davis called it yuchayatungi tzatzi. That's what he named the parrot because it can talk. Mm -hmm. So you play a tongue would work as well. I was looking um, at all of the different ways about talking, and one of them said um, she is telling a story. So I thought, I wonder if I could use that. Has neat whatever. Um, yeah. uh, so you could say. Um, Although to say the book is telling the story, um, you probably have to do a little bit of extra work because a book doesn't usually tell a story. Yeah. So you put one of the CHs on there. Yeah, I don't know. This book told a story to people. But then it's leaning more towards like being a sentence than like a name. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good enough cheese. Um, I say to which part? He matched the two. He matched the two. Wait, that's it. So what function is the SH? 
it's the self. Reflexive. Oh, reflexive. Oh. Oh. It's going to read itself. Oh. Okay. This happened when we named mayonnaise. We had we came up with four different names. I think for it. Because we had lots of great ideas and we didn't want to let them go, so we just said, "Okay, we can pick which one." Else. So for mayonnaise, we came up with "kabukikaku um, kwet kae." It's pretty literal. Uh, it's Kaudukihaku uh, means it's been whipped up, like so berries, uh, egg, eggs, and oil. Kleikehi, white oil, and kleikhaehi, uh, white person's oil. So those are the three things that we came up with. And I think the other one was the fish. You have smoked fish that's in a jar. That was another one that I think came up with. And I think there's it was thrown in there. Okay. Well, this one's good. I like this. The book that reads itself out loud. And then why do we need the kina? Because you can use the two. It's just sitting there reading. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, yeah, I get to cut you on. Oh, you okay. Yeah, well, he was a good one. I mean, can she show him can you something? It wasn't. Uh, I took the battery out and put it back in. Now it works. So. You okay. I guess it's good if you can hear me. Okay, any other questions? So we, we end up with Kinach Shtetu Wukuch for an audio book. Sheesh, Shafau Ish. Okay. Yeah, what? What? Yan yu wane yi do sa tu tu a sa gu yi yi de ka kwa ha yi We dialogue yis wu shu kha du tli at ki Da sa? Oh yeah, yeah let me just clear that real quick So this would be the one Ki nach shta tu wu khu Okay. Okay, is anybody ready for their dialogue? Yes. Okay. That's what you get for looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me change the camera. I get this fancy camera now. Was 
Chetak Kwadga Tuwin Chetlay Achwak Chetushke Chet Kwadga Tuwin Aga Awel Kinak Tuwin Kuk Achuni, Achuni Awati, Yigat Kagatu Kai Achsa'a. Dach Kuch Satuasigu. Ach Wasigu Su Lampin. A is the alibi, Hune Ach 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 Kush. I know that. A kausha hit. Why is for yesterday a kausha hit? Tliya ta una. Achua z is for like that. Kuk kwasti. Ish on. Oh. Click. Kakar a jin kuh out a cow shikit. Kwa shikit a nak a cow shikit. Kushe date dahin a kuh shakit. Ach to us it will do tashidi tashidi kwa tu we mia moriarti. Dasa kat sewa aku. Alice, you do a sock we kuch a kaush kit. Australian, ye yeti. Chasta kat kuch a kaush kit nat tuch. Kushe du kuch ni tu a ke gusaku. Se kwasaku wasa du a sock. Mystery shikit ke na. Mysteries to us. That was a truly mystery when we came out sick. Leanne Moriarty, a death cook was a off. Chai Yesu still life by Louise Penny. Qua tu. Ha, yes, it ha. Yes, it ka. Ziyak, kwa tu ku a, a kat, sakwa a kwa. Duku a tu a sibu. Ziyagin. Ha. Wuk echa kena chish. Wuk e, ketene we, kai shikit. We, mystery kwa he kwa saku wa sakakh tu sa. Hesh wa diskush kashnik. Yeah, we hesh wa diskush kashnik. Tle di hina ya. Yeah, we. A kakha ya. Gwash we kukha ya. We. Kha. Romance novel, ye do a saako at ya do a whoosh gate. Whoosh gate. I get this, I get this nichi shkashnik tse. Ye awe, we shuko a mystery, we a tai a romance. Hesh wo tusku shkashnik. Wush geit a yad dis nich yish gach nich. Ye ewe, ya, ya a yad dis nich. Wush geit a yad dis, a yad dis chich yish gach nich. Ye ewe, klai de hin shqagwech e chad wu ti. Ye ewe, a kad chad se o chag, a sad du a sag hu. Gwech 1999 ewe, 
we help with the scush gasnik that he a way hook or we cook a couch hit. Shakwek a ya a day cook quatin. Ye a walk to us a goo to hunt her goody. Ya cook a couch hit ye a way a dodge to us too. We schoon tain. A caway a rein a cowanik. Ye help with the scush gasniki. A dad a kautusha hit. We kuini, we kuajaki, we kashushkei at watchwen kat jadasa. When kanins wush kanach wutu da adi, kanachawe at wutu wa shuk kahatu wu yake. Yet jakuta koa akuni wush eta yat sniki shkashni kits at him. How to cook out the yak nooch. Ya hostish kashniki took ya kunachwe, Sahana ka has kuashi, whoosh kait has yout the ah, ka whoosh has our hush kajadasa. A ka away ya gosh whoosh kanachas with the ah, the khan has the two ye a tea ka ke has a way knooch. Ye awa a tata yak was shook. So one time, uh, an author was coming to Skagway. She was a mystery writer. And I thought, eh, I kind of study hardcore fiction, but I'll go. <laughs> and, uh, and she was a really neat person. And she was, one thing that she shared was she was a mystery writer. And they write about murder and death and mystery and police and investigations and when they have their writing conferences they're all happy and laughing and telling jokes and she has a friend who is a romance writer and they write about like love and passion and sex and she said she'd go to a conference with her friend and they were all just angry and yelling at each other so, and i was like that's fantastic i'm glad she told me that so Okay, good cheese. Any any responses, questions? I got a question for y'all because somebody asked me this: when you would use a kaushahit and kaujik kaujikit. So these are both perfective verbs. When would you use one, and when would you use the other, and why? Well, I told you the answer. Let's see if anybody else knows. But then if, if they don't know, then you'll tell us. Is that when then before? Well, you would say, that's a, that's a good point, because you would say, cow, do, je, hit. So yes, the fourth person would also push it into the J, which is a plus D, right? Okay, yana eat ha in kanani kadat. Well, I have a question that's eerily similar to this earlier today. And I couldn't decide how to say which, how to pick which one of the writing verbs for she wrote a book. Right. Um, and I was wondering if it was similar to like the period. Or is it material like where you just hear something or click like the imperfective versus the perfective something specific? So Sune told me a couch case is when you're talking about what's not yet. Lift your voice. One is object oriented. She wrote it last night. Yes. Husky, a couch kit. She wrote it. Yes, a night. poem, a letter. And if you just say she wrote last night, that's yeah, wow. And there's a series of things where you can kick the object out of the verb, but doing so pushes that classifier plus D. So last night I read a book. Tut or nistat away. Yahweh Last night I read. I read a book, I read a newspaper. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I read. Nestat away khwadde tu. So that one as well. Khwadde and khwa. 
So in, you'll, you'll see this as well. So you'll say, uh, I'm sewing this shirt, or I'm sewing these pants, or I'm sewing this thing. But if you're just talking about the action, so then that D pops in there, and you've kicked the object out. And there's a set of verbs that you can do that to. And we'll see that when we go back through beginning and we look at all those verbs, there's a bunch of them that have their plus D because the object has been removed. Because those ones, they just want to focus on the action. Right? Okay. So this then isn't the same case as in teen. That was what I was trying to remember. Teen. Yeah, so teen, there you're getting the classifier. Because you could, you're the same group, but you can add the D component to it. But when you go from khatin to khwasatin, you're, you go into a diff, totally different verb by switching the classifier group. Okay, yuck A. Who wants to go next? We can go. Okay. Cheesh. I'm not sure if my partner is online or in class. <laughs> right, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so we have like two different dialogues though, just so nobody gets confused. So we'll just do them like one at a time. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, Drop, drop the curtain in between them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so who, who, okay. My person needs to go first. Good day, Sarah Yani Good. 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 Ya ya ni got. Ya ni get it to wasagu. Ah, yak a got it enough sa yeti. Suck name katu ka genjet chuan gishu tai ka pineapple ka tomato sauce ka cheese eating a cut yeti. Groceries get it to wasagu. Ah, yak a. Groceries are to a ach to a sifu. Got ka at a hini gash shops eating a cut yeti. Ah, uh, hoon duck a hiddy day, nuck to at hooch. Yuke, good cheese. At one away, wuke. What's that cook when they eat that for? Baking powder, eh? Ah, uh, ha, uh, um, awa tea, baking powder, suck name, ache, a uh, yik. Wake, quack, hunt, dark, sain, a uh, kick, nah, ech. Ya, ya, what are you? Ach, ida, ya, ya, na, hain, ya, ya, dat. Wasawa a a 
pizza cut cut say work up cush would do a saw Questions, reactions, thoughts? Did I say Canadian bacon right? That's how I'd probably say it. Okay. <laughs> Goodness, cheese. Yeah, well, ha, yet that's it. I hit key team. Wait, a good at high dot you how to shut yet to tart. Wait, who to get you? Yeah, well, like that's a to us. That's the way a cook. That's the way a two. A nasty again. How you tie a cage like How you just tie a cage like a sound in a way. How? Very badly. Let's to our Oshka. A dawa ach. How? Yeah, away. Just the cut kaku aya one panins chakutet hai has to tua to do tua yeti. Heswasa uti. Yet at so. Gwash do a. Who away ye awa kazi yagen. Yata. Yata yakeke. Has the kayati again. Do Jeff the party. Do Jeff the party, Mr. Shahal. Do Jeff the party. Ah, the party. Yeah, well. If I could sit here, take the second. Ah, wait. Yeah, well. Yak that, yak that again. Yay in the cage. Yata. Yaka. Just the cut again. Like think it's too okay. Uh, 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 so there's um, something that speakers will use in place of hus. So hus means like them, right? So you could say uh, hus yati. They are whatever. And in this case, you had a, like a color, right? So you could say like khan hus yati or khan ya hus yati, right? They are red. But you can also say, you say dakati, or sometimes this will come out as dak. And I hear this more in the interior than I do here. Uh, and it means each of them. And so sometimes there's just a slight difference. Uh, like, especially if you have some sort of like, all those sea lions, they each jumped into the water. And you're not talking about them all going at once, but they're going sometimes in different directions and stuff. And that's sometimes where you're going to get the, the daqa or the dakh. You'll hear that. And it goes, you, you won't have hus at the same time. Uh, it'll be in place of hus. And it's usually built right onto the verb as well. But it's not something you'll hear a whole lot. Uh, but if you work with some of the old speakers and you're translating stuff, you'll probably catch them using this. It's, it's something that's kind of fallen. It seems to be falling out of use in some places. Uh, and it's a pretty fun thing because it's like 
it's just a little bit different in, in terms of the meaning and how you're using it. Could you cover that with signs? Yeah, you could. Uh, yach dakati. They're all, each of them are red. Oh, uh, yeah, there's actually, uh, if you guys can get that George Jim recording, he actually uses this from what he's described in the different kinds of people. Because there's a, he tells the Mishkipa history, and they end up going into the water. And there's this group of people that they come across, and their skin is all like dark, like purple. Like it says, And so he uses it there, and then when he starts talking about the, these other group of people who are all Tanya, they're all red. And they cannot be like the red snapper people, and then there's the killer whale people, they're black too. So it's a key use that every time that he's talking about a big group of people, and he's saying they're all like this, he uses that. You'll see it in the Hashuka, in the Duktut, no, Hakachguk story, when they'll talk about they each put them into their bags. So it's like a bunch of people doing things, but sort of a little bit separately sometimes. And, that's, that's how I see it kind of functioning. Um, and so that's why we say usually each of them instead of them. It just puts a little bit more sort of stress on. They might be doing it at different times or different ways, but they're all kind of doing the same thing. Okay. Okay. Anyone else ready? Okay, well, hold on a second there. So there is an on-campus lecture uh, starting at seven o'clock in the Egan Lecture Hall. Uh, it's, let's see, it says here, Colonial Mentality, Manifestations, Operation, and Mental Health Implications. Throughout history, people are stereotyped and discriminated against simply because of the so their social group membership. But what does it look like when such oppression gets under their skin? With the focus on Filipinos' colonial past and neo-colonial contemporary reality, this presentation by visiting scholar E.J.R. David We'll discuss the manifest manifestations and psychological implications of internalized oppression as felt and experienced by various communities. So I thought this would be good uh, if you wanted to see it. So we'll probably wrap up a little early today so you guys could walk over if you want to check it out. We get visiting scholars here at times, and this is uh, a Filipino and a, a Dene scholar. He teaches in Anchorage at UAA, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to sort of um, go check out what he's uh, present. Okay. So if you haven't done your dialogue yet, we're going to have to figure that out. Uh, next week's going to look a little... Tuesday I'll be traveling, but I do expect that we'll have class. Um, does anybody want to set up the computer stuff in the class? If you're here? If you're here, yeah. Okay. Do we need to bring a computer to do it? You would have to bring a, a laptop to do it. It doesn't have to be a Mac. It just has to have the Zoom. Okay. Well, if Alice can't do it, I can bring my PC and Okay. Yeah, I can. I can see if someone if someone could. The only part, like they like to go home usually at five. So. But yeah. Okay. Good cheese. So and that that IT person is in the classroom. Yeah, I think they do come over from, and so let's just uh, communicate through email okay. as we get closer, and I'll put you in touch with the IT folks. Whoever's setting it up. 
<laughs> I'll bring you something from Berkeley. Berkeley. <laughs> okay. So, and then we got to do, if you haven't done your dialogue, you can still do it, even if I'm dialed in and leading things from afar. We also will be picking up our discussions on the perfective. We'll probably take a look at these action verbs at the, the end of beginning klinget, just to start thinking about how do we start using those and how do we, we can put objects back in them if they've been, the objects have been kicked out and what does that mean? Uh, we'll keep going through aptatsin and uh, let me see. Oh, it looks like I got a question here. Hold on. Do we continue to do our five sentences? Yeah, yeah. So let's pick that back up. So let's do our seven sentences for Tuesday. Or five, whatever. Okay, looks like Yaktushikha Kuatun in Geyuene Yit Koaha. Cheesh. Wa e a kwa kutung hao wa sa eeti. Ah, ah, tu wu yak e. Hun dacha hiddy tu de yan nagut. Yan ha hun hunts yis. Ah ish tu sa ih e ka naidi. Wa sa eeti. Tlesh wa sa hut wudi hwet. Yan has hun hana at ha kanak. Ah yet he has yanit. Tahini kate has do to wasigu kaya do hat. What gains a Hawaii de yan with the kin? Ishan ah with the with the she ah with the she has do the yuanik. Eh, this. Oh, it could see. Das anu. Oahu, Kwan. Yet, eh, yet, ki hoi de ha ya has na da kin age? Ah, nask yet, eh. Yet, eh, hawe, yet, eh, sitini, de kokwagu, chanaya di ah ide yana hain. The yagen kuatun. Which? <laughs> 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 Sukke, you hon? What clay hoot? Okay. Wook A. Those are fantastic. So uh, I don't think we have too many left, so we'll do a couple on Tuesday and then we'll shift back towards our Akutatsin story and keep moving through unless anybody has any questions. I think I'm unmuted. Kune? Dasa? Ilkin? Oh, yeah. Um, my, my, I was trying to get how to say it in, in Clinket, but I've been by myself. Oh. So, um, at, let me see. At she e g yees Christmas songs. Okay. he inky, nest is inky. The key on cow, ye comes it he do ye giha ho do sailing ho do ye ziggy din ye satin do jeez hajis yan umplie haji yan umplie. Ah, good achievement. Yuck, eh, yeah, and if any of our, I know our Hadekha Kaniyan Ka Hadekha Hunkian 
Yigwai Huan Hosaku Wasa Hutia Heti Yikosti Ponachi Kach Ayayitech Watank Nuch. So, our inland uh, relatives, I know you guys have been having a, a tough go. So, whenever you guys are ready with your dialogues, it's, it's totally fine. I know some folks have taken a little break, and I know a lot's been happening there, a lot of losses. Kainache uh, Hat Yati is I'm, a, I'm alone. Kainache uh, Hat Wuti, I was alone. Uh, if we want to keep the blues song going, Kainach Ye Hat Natich, I'm always alone. <laughs> So we've got our first three lines for our great next uh, country song or something. My dog ran away from me. My car broke down. So, uh, but that's how you talk about being, I've been by myself. I've been the only one here. Uh, in certain, in some situations, it could be interpreted as lonely, by yourself, but it could be it could be other things too. Like it was one person who did it or did it by themselves type of thing. Yeah, okay, good cheese. When you came, there's always one word for me. Cheat. What is the Buddhist school? Hey, Buddhist Nobody knows. I don't know. What is like a mystery? They call it a mystery, right? Yeah. I guess you could say Nobody knows who did it. But that's getting too long. Okay. Anything? Anybody got anything else? Questions? Things you want to share? How about... Um I, I realized that I've written by how lessons you do you take out that English by? Uh, yeah, so the, the by part. Um, so you could say um, if you had a book, right? So you could say, a uh, you just say a kaushahit and then you name them. So you don't really need the by part. So that you're going to find there's a bunch of little words in English that you don't always need in Tlingit. Like, for example, I asked someone how I said, how do you say, thank you for the food? And they just said, So the, the for part doesn't really translate because if you try to use it in Tlingit, it's like you're trying to give your thanks to the food type of a thing. And so there's sometimes where the logic doesn't always work the same. Uh, you could you could do stuff too, like if it's getting a little complicated, you could have their name with C H. So you could say Shakao Ish Kaushahitwe Huk. So that's how you can also if you need to mark specifically who did it, you could put the C H on the person's name. Okay. Okay. Anything you want to share with us? Okay. Okay, so we got, uh, and just, if you got other things, just bring them up. We're just going to kind of just keep moving through this story, seeing what kinds of things are in there. Uh, so he, uh, he kicked this salmon down the beach, and uh, he encounters these people, and we talked about this gate quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't, it, there are these terms that I think, unless uh, you saw the context, like a gate, you usually think of as like violating something, doing something wrong. Uh, but it doesn't always mean that, but that is kind of built into its default meaning. Wush gay day, they were, they were getting in trouble together. A lot of times that's what that would mean, but wush to gate would mean they were, they were in a disagreement of some sort. So now we get to this sentence. Aya at in 
What do we got there? Aya at in you had to at. Oh, right. It's usually a uh, in, right? Let's see. Let's see how it is. Could be one of those things where maybe we're not quite catching it in the recording. So let's listen to Hashkawu saying it. Hat in the Hat in the Hat in yeah, it's pretty contracted, but it seems. It would make sense if it's there. At in, you, you just don't hear, I don't think. A in, which would you usually hear, a in, almost every speaker is going to just say on. It's going to contract into on. At in, like with something, but it just doesn't, unless it was something kind of strange, like they were doing it, there was some, they were doing something with something kind of strange over there. So I would probably lean towards a ayatu in you khatut la atk. Any parts of that that you guys are recognizing? What is the you adudli atk part? Yeah, people. Talking, talking, people talking. Talking, people are talking. So then, and so a-a-ya, a-a-ya and a a these are used in storytelling. They, it's tough to put really a meaning on there. It's sort of like so, or just, it just helps carry the story along. But it's really good to focus on these small things that the storytellers use, because it could be just part of your, you're just so, just drawing a little bit of attention to what you're about to say. So the, there's the conversing. So what's the do in part? Wuchin would be together, and so yuch adutli atk is one of these things. Uh, there's a number of these different verbs where if the in or eat part pops up before it, you're just saying who that verb was being done with or to. So in this case, you would probably say, then they talked to him. And they say, we'll just have, we'll hear it from him. Hmm. 
There's a missing part again. Yeah, let me check. It might be just sort of uh Uh, Mickey is just making a little bit of noise. Come here by us, is it right? Uh, yes. Haku ha'ini. So, um, Haku ha'ini. Uh, Haku is come here, right? So, Aqa is and then. Ha'ini, I would say, haku ha'ini would be like, come here and be with us. And you know, I would use exclamation points on these things because haku is a command. Haku ha'ini. Right, so ha'in is with us. And so there are some different things that you can sort of, you can say ha'in naku. Come walk with us, right? Um, ha'in something, you know, with us is what you're getting there. Okay. Okay. So next part. Ayyakukun. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it's a party. Yeah, well, I'm not a party. Is it in the boat? That's our boat? Walking in the boat. Yeah, so you have a you. Um, and then when a we and a you and a ya, when they start a sentence in a story, they don't always mean. It's just sort of like, then, it's, it's, it's always interesting when you, it's sort of like there's a lot of storytellers who go, ah, or speakers, I'll just say that all the time. And early on when people were doing translations, they'd be like, yes, 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 yes. I was like, well, not every, you could just, it's just a thing you do in Tlingit. Sort of like when you say, oh, uh, and you're just like, and sometimes you're just trying to think, sometimes you're just sort of saying, I'm still going. You know, sometimes it's sort of an end then type of a thing. But if you if they're using a you a lot, that is putting it into sort of a different time frame, usually long time ago. Oops. Yeah, good. I think I heard somebody say it online. He climbed in a boat or yeah. what? He climbed in the boat, right? Or got in the boat, you know? I thought walk, uh, Wugut is walking. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Wugut is walking. So, um, and it, Wugut can also be just generically going. But it's kind of up to us and up to you guys, although I'm driving right now. But uh, whether you're going to say stepped in the boat, got in the boat, walked into the boat, walked up and got in the boat. But usually you say yak. I would usually translate that as he got in the boat. And you know, he walked there, yes. But the, the action is really focusing on getting into the boat. And you, know, you could say got out of the boat too. So what about the kun part? Yes. So it has to do with people. So kun, uh, sort, of, sort of like when we said a in, you're going to get on. Ka in, you're going to get kun. However, in the interior, it seems like they prefer ka e as opposed to kun. 
But this is where Ku Atlatu comes from, um, Kun, Kun Kadunik, the people are being told, right? And so it's just generically sort of people. So then he got into the boat uh, with those people. We might say those, you know, because it's kind of focusing on this group that he's just encountered. Okay. <laughs> Paddling, yes, it has to do with paddling. So let's go find the Kha. Let's look this one up. So we're going to look up Kha. And then, so this one, our ha, would be to paddle a boat. But this one we do have when we see a yaudu ha, there is this ya in front of it. So when we look this verb up, we are trying to find one that has the ya in the front. So the way that story and nature are going to write this down, ya and ya. The first one is the thematic part. The second one is the classifier group, right? Transport by boat. So it's a little different than paddling. So then a yaudu wacha, I would say he was transported by the boat, right? He was, the boat they gave him a ride, however we want to sort of look at that. Um, he was transported by a boat. I was thinking he was told. What's that? I was thinking he was told. Yeah, and so towing would also be a really similar uh, verb. Yeah, what? Um, so I'm not totally wrong? <laughs> no, no. So okay. I've heard that one be used to talk about towing as well. Because mm -hmm. that could be as well, like they, they paddled it and it was taken, but chach is sometimes used as towing but I, I think if you towed a a boat but with another boat they might say okay 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 next line to him, it looks like they're doing it like us. Yes, yeah, So, do wakshiyik would be where he could see it. It, it. it means like in front of their vision. So, sometimes they'll say, ta wakshiyik, and they're talking about bringing something out into the public. Like, you know, especially at puik or something, they wanted people to see this. Do uh, wakshiyik means like where he could see it. But then in the context, as we're talking about what comes next, as we come back and sort of interpret the whole line, it's sort of like to him, the way that he saw it, right in front of his eyes. Yes, before his very eyes. This kle part is something to keep an eye on. It usually means then or at that time. So usually you're tying two things together and you're saying, right at this time, this other thing. And sometimes you'll get multiple ones in one sentence and the speakers are really talking about things are happening at the same time or it's like this thing, then that thing, then that thing. Uh, but just keep an eye on it. It's something to, to just watch, think about, um, but yeah, right before his eyes, then, so we would say right before his eyes. Or at that time, So as we heard the interpretation from Deo G, uh, they were, they were clinkets just like us. They were humans just like us. And so, Again, like, how are you going to interpret this? 
Because when they're using clinkit like this, they're not talking about a clinkit who's registered at clinkit and Haida or whatever. They're talking about a human being. Human. Right? They were humans like us. Right? So and then in the in the context of the story, now we start thinking, oh, well then they must not have been, right? Because if you're telling a story and you say they look like humans, right? <laughs> that probably means they weren't. Okay, everybody okay? Next line. Yes, he didn't know what was happening. So uh, a couple of things to remember when someone doesn't know that stem should always be short and high. Because I hear lots of us saying, Hechwasaku, Hechwasaku, cut it short. You don't know, so cut it short. I'm just and then um, this one is pretty fun. Uh, one time I saw two elders who hadn't seen each other in a long time. And one of them said to the other, like when they were just saying hello, they big hugs. What's happening with you, right? And it's just a really, it was a really fun thing to hear. I mean, it was difficult circumstances. One of them had recently become a widow, uh, but it was just neat to see their interaction. So could also mean what, what is happening, right? So same way, like if you see something and it's confusing to you, you could, certain, you could certainly say something like this. Also, this is a good thing for dialogue. What's going on? What's happening? Right? Next one. Where is his mom? Where is his dad? Yes, Tish. So Tish is loneliness. There's quite a few things where that verb root on its own is also a noun. And Wushatish is one of them. So Tish is just lonesomeness. Uh, it could be boredom, but it's usually loneliness is what we're seeing it being used as for speakers. And then there's, there's different ways you could say, you know, so what is the Dukadeyana good part? Like, what does that literally mean? Yeah, it, it came upon him. And so this is used for sadness, sickness, hard times. It, it just walks right over us. It's basically... Um, that sickness really came upon us. And so this is a very common thing at construction for bad times. Um, cut goot is uh, like upon, like it walks upon and cut goot means like, it's kind of a euphemism, I guess, for like diarrhea, right? And so when things come walking up on you, that's always a, that's a pretty bad thing in Shingit, right? And, and so there's a number of different things. And it's really interesting because you could say, he started to get lonely, but it just has a different way. It's like, boom, it just came upon him, right? And then you got in the front. So like true, like on its own would mean, true loneliness right and so how do you guys want to how are we going to interpret that mm -hmm. 
Do you want to take a shot? Yeah, that sounds great. A great, oops. We'll put it in all caps. <laughs> right, so overcame him, came upon him. There's so many, it's so fun to sort of do this type of work because now you get to become the interpreters. Right, when you guys are making the books too, you'd be like, yeah, well, that's how I thought it should be, right? But then it's really fun because like just what the thing it is doing, how could we do something similar in English, right? Okay, oops. Okay, next one. Okay. Ya nakhu atin khu Ya nakhu atin khu Ya the thing where you're like not the whole thing low to you know, or not even acting like you're going to go into the cool way to 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 the Ya not who I tin the coo. A coe ya on a coo tin the coo. Yeah, we have a horrible fire. Okay. <laughs> he, sees, he sees something. Does he see clothes? Well, so, uh, let's see. So, is there a good resource to refer to when working on writing our sentences in Kinder for structure? On <laughs> Shawatke? Uh, yeah, I guess how Senech Hayukhetangi kind of breaks down. There's a one chapter in there that starts to talk about the different parts of speech that might go into a verb. That's probably a good one to look at. I think it's called, I can't remember which one it is. But it's got a bunch of, you know, when we start talking about structure and word order, it depends if we're talking about like at the sentence level or with the verb. But, um, and let's see, Tachanes. Can you guys see this okay? Those of you online? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's just take let's take this um, in little chunks. Ach away. What is that part doing? So as we're sort of storytelling and starting to string some things together, so we kind of got. Uh, he, he's in this boat, he's being transported, he suddenly, he doesn't know what's going on, he's thinking about his mom and dad, he gets really lonely. When you use that, it means at that place. So there, at that place, it kind of depends. Um, we might start there, at that place, or there. It just, it depends what's kind of coming next. Just... It comes from ah, where we did a bunch of things, a day, a dach, a kan, you know, ach, ach. Uh, stories are going to use this a lot, and think it is going to use this a lot. You just say ach, and it could mean that time or that place. It, it kind of depends on uh, how it's being used. Ya an at kuatini kuu. I'm going to actually separate this. 
So. Are you, I, I want to go back to that, at that place. Is okay. It, it's sort of like at that point in time. It I could be that. It's like, oh, we're just, at this time, at this point. Yeah. Either place or time. Then or there. Yeah. yeah, it could be either one. Because Tlingit really treats them as the same thing a lot of times. So at that place or at that time. Ya'an atquwatiniku'u. So this part, the ya'an part, um, the on, in this case, we're getting uh, with it or with him, right? Usually you, would, you might say du'in atquwatiniku'u. Atquwatini. What do you guys have for that one? Because not seeing, right? So once you put the k in front of it, it goes from seeing to traveling, right? So you could say wugut is to walk, wushik uh, is to run, wudqin is to fly. Kuwatin means to travel. And it's just, maybe I'll go by boat, maybe I'll go by car. And it does have to do with, it's sort of like seeing spaces is sort of how the logic is, is kind of working, but together it just means to travel, right? And so if you don't know how someone's going to go somewhere, you could say um, someone's packing their suitcase. Where are you going to travel to, right? I'm going to travel there, right? Greece, they cook quatine. Someday, right? But so this one, and then the ku'u part, what is that? Hmm? Yes, ku'u is people. So I'll hear I'll hear some folks saying like uh, Ak Kwan. We can say Ak Ku'u, the people of Ak. And it could be the people of anything. Yis Ku'u is like new generations. Um, Ku'u, just the people that were there. Uh, you know, they might say Yi'an Tisha'ani Ku'u, the people you are being kind with. Um, so the on part, usually in, in a context like this, it, it means the ones doing that verb, the ones you're verbing with, right? So you could say on blank, where there's some verb there. And together it means the ones you're doing that verb with. And it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's an interesting sort of construction uh, but so then you say um, there, the ones, the people he was traveling. Is there two L's or one? Dang it. Okay. Are you okay? Next line. I get to that shut her head. Yeah. I get to that shut her head. Yeah. I get to that shut her head. I get the that I get
от детки, что читать, что читать. От детки, а я от от. I think the last part is at. It could be ye. Yeah. It sounds like. At детки, что читать, что читать. I think so. At детки, что читать, что читать. This first at isn't in there, though. At yet each to jeet a ya shikel at. To jeet at. At yet kish to jeet at shatakran. I think it's just an a ya. At yet each to jeet a ya shikel at. It could be a. Uh, to cheat a. Uh, Mm. Okay. Give them some kids. So that yeah, there's these kids at yet kitch. Collecting. Uh, not really collecting at yet kitch do jeet. So do jeet would usually imply. Often there's some sort of carrying verb that would come after that. But it's it's not in here. But a lot of times, do jeet would be to give somebody something. And so we have a yet key. They gave uh, him some kids. Go ahead. They gave him some kids. Well, that's a good sort of deduction. But when you have a yet key, which could also be a dut key, once you put the ch on there, they're the ones who did it. Right, they're the ones who did whatever the thing is. So once you go to Adyetkich, they're the ones who are doing something. And in this case, Dujit. So it's probably these, the kids gave him. Right, that's, that's what I would think. Uh, oh, Shishtek. Okay, okay. At yet kish to jeet at shatakran. At yet kish to jeet at shatakran. Shatakran. Yeah. Yeah. To jit aya at. Huh. So, so let's look up this kek thing. Go to the verb dictionary. And here's shagatek, right? To grab uh, objects one at a time. Where is this one at, though? It's right here. I think it has to do with. Maybe it has something to do with that one. They kept bringing him things mm -hmm. to eat. Yeah, this one is a pretty. This one's a pretty tough one. It's a pretty unique verb. So do jeet aya shakat. They just they keep bringing him things to eat, and there's and so this kek has to do with. Uh, just sort of grabbing things one at a time. And I, I think it all kind of derives from this verb, which could mean to pick one berry 
at a time. But then there's this related version of it, which means to just grab a bunch of stuff and shove it in your mouth, right? And so, uh, yagi was what one elder told me we should name Thanksgiving. It's like hoggish, just hoggish days, ah, right? Uh, but in this case, and then when we get into the translation, they, they kept bringing him things to eat. Children are bringing him things to eat. Oh, could you play that sentence again, Hune? Uh, yeah. There was, but then I took it out. If two people are hearing it, then I better put it back in. I get the case to do that, so I took it. Yeah. I get, I get to keep it. We'll leave it in there. Okay. Something you could bring one hand at a time. Okay, so there's a presentation going on at uh, seven, so we're gonna stop now. So those who are in Juno City can go to that presentation. Tuesday, if you haven't done your dialogues, uh, let's try to get them done. If you need any help, feel free to ask questions through email or whatever, and I'll help as much as I can. Uh, everybody's doing fantastic, and if cheese for all your work, We'll see you guys on Tuesday. I'll be in Berkeley, that'll be fun. Which email address works best for you? Usually the school one, L.A. Twitchell at alaska.edu. Oh. <laughs>